Hello, almost third graders. It's Miss Letchworth here back to share with you as we continue on in our text of Bandit um, by Ellen Miles in the Puppy Play series, a wonderful book by the publishing company Scholastic, which has given me permission to read this to you guys and record it for our Google Classroom and online learning. So we had just left off with Lizzie Peterson and her family who are fostering Bandit. He needs heart surgery, right? Um, and to raise money for his heart surgery, Lizzie and her best friend Maria are dog walking to make money. So they are charging people to walk their dogs. They have both created their different businesses and Lizzie has decided it's kind of going to be a competition who can get more dogs to walk, right? In other words, who could raise more money? We also remember that um, everybody loves Bandit, including Uncle Tio, Maria's uncle, um, who, even though he's this big, brawly guy with lots of tattoos, he drives trucks, he kind of likes this cute little tiny puppy right here, which kind of goes against his character when you say. All right, so we are now at chapter seven. Let's enjoy. Later that night, just before bedtime, Maria called. Guess what? She blurted out as soon as Lizzie picked up the phone. I have three clients, three dogs times five walks a week times $3 a walk. That's $45 a week. We'll raise the money in no time. How about you? Did you get any clients? A few, said Lizzie, grinning to herself as she pumped a fist. Yes, starting out over on Sunset had really paid off. Remember, Sunset was the street that was super close to Maria's area. So it was like Lizzie went just far enough um, to kind of get in Maria's territory because she wanted to get as many clients as she could. She had twice, this is Lizzie, had twice as many clients as Maria. So she'd be earning twice as much money. That was, she did the math, $90 a week. But she kept quiet. She didn't want to hear Maria tell her that she had made this dog walking thing into a contest even though she possibly maybe sort of kind of had. Quickly, she changed the subject. You should see Bandit, he is so cute. He's sleeping on my bed right now. But before dinner, he was playing with Buddy's big stuffed teddy bear. The bear was almost bigger than he was, but Bandit carried it all over the house. I guess he finally tired himself out. Aw, said Maria, little Bandit. Hey, you know what's weird? I think somebody else around here might've started a dog walking business too. When I went over to Sunset to try to get more clients, people kept telling me they were all set. I wonder who that could be. Um, said Lizzie. It was time to change the subject again. I think I hear my dad calling, I better go. She hung up, feeling a wave of queasiness in her stomach. She should have just told Maria that she was the person walking dogs on Sunset. But did it really matter who was walking which dogs? After all, the main thing was to raise money for Bandit's operation. Bandit! She ran upstairs to her room to find the puppy still asleep on her bed. He had found the most comfortable spot, cozied up between her two pillows. Bandit, she cooed, curling up next to him. He yawned, a sleepy pink yawn, and kissed her on the cheek. Hi there, it's about time somebody found me and gave me some attention. Then he yawned again, his eyelids drooped, and a moment later he was fast asleep. Sleep did not come so easily to Lizzie that night. She kept going over her client list in her mind, trying to figure out the best route to take as she picked up each dog. And every time she thought about her clients on Sunset, she felt a twinge in her tummy. Sometimes when you know that you maybe made a bad decision, a mistake, you feel a little bit upset in your stomach, right? I think she feels like, oh, I should have just told Maria the truth, that I'd gone really close to her area, that I possibly took some of her clients. So she might be feeling about bad about that and the fact that she didn't tell Maria the truth. We'll see. The next day, Lizzie set out right after school. She decided to get, head over to Sunset first, pick up Atlas, then work her way back toward her own neighborhood, picking up dogs along the way. When she picked up Max, the dog who lived nearest to her house, she would walk all of them back toward Sunset to return Atlas, then drop off the other dogs that she had at home. That way, each dog will get a nice long walk. Then, when she was done with a group walk, she'd have to walk Ginger on her own. That would be easy. Ginger lived just down the street, and Ms. Davis, her owner, said she didn't like to go for long walks. 
Mom and Dad had seemed doubtful when Lizzie explained her plan, but she was sure she could manage. It took a bit longer to walk over to Alice's house than Lizzie had imagined. When she arrived, the big golden retriever was raring to go. She could barely get his leash clipped on before he dashed out the door, dragging her down the walk. Whoa, whoa, she yelled. Slow down, Atlas. She reeled him in and told him to heal. He looked up at her with a happy grin and did exactly what she'd asked, sticking to her left side like glue. Atlas really could behave well, as long as you reminded him to. Before she and Atlas had even walked the three blocks to her next client's house, Lizzie was glad she'd remembered to stick a bunch of plastic bags in her backpack. Picking up poop was not her favorite part of this job, but she knew it had to be done. The next dog she picked up was Scruffy, the Morky. He was adorable, but he turned out to be a dawdler. The little dog stopped at every bush to pee and halted in his tracks whenever he had a squirrel or cat that needed barking at. Tank's owner had left the back door unlocked with a note telling Lizzie where to find his leash and halter. Unfortunately, the halter was not where it was supposed to be. So Lizzie just clipped his leather leash onto his collar and hoped for the best. So I'm imagining, I'm gonna use context clues if I don't know what the word halter means, but I know what a leash and a collar are. The collar goes here and she just attached the leash to his collar that I'm guessing the halter must be the thing that goes on the lower part of the dog's body. Um, and wraps around and there's a hook on its back. And so that's typically for stronger, bigger dogs, right? So you're pulling not on their neck with a collar, but more on their back and their body with a halter. So she couldn't find the halter, but she did attach it to the leash. Let's see what happens. Whoa, she yelled as Tate pulled her and the other dogs down the street. This young German Shepherd was even stronger than Atlas, but unlike the obedient Golden Retriever, Tank did not pay one bit of attention when she told him to heal. For the next few blocks, Lizzie thought she was going to be pulled in half as Tank and Atlas surged forward and Scruffy hung back. For a tiny dog, Scruffy was surprisingly strong. So it's almost like Lizzie's playing tug of war, right? She's got two strong dogs pulling her forward, one little dog holding her back. By the time Lizzie stopped to pick up Dottie the Dalmatian, she was already beginning to think mom and dad had been right. Maybe she couldn't walk five dogs at once. Fortunately, Dottie was good on the leash, but she did not get along with the other dogs well, as well as her owners said that she would. She seemed to like Scruffy, but she growled every time Tank or Atlas came near her, lifting her lip and barring her teeth, baring her teeth, excuse me. No, Dottie, Lizzie yelled every time Dottie growled. But since Dottie was deaf, that didn't do much good. Lizzie just had to try to keep her away from the bigger dogs, which was not easy. All four dogs went back and forth, tangling their leashes and nearly tripping Lizzie with every step. Lizzie must have looked frazzled by the time she knocked on the door of the house where Max, the mini Doberman Pinscher, lived. Uh, are you okay? asked his owner, Miss Federica. Max can wait until later if you want to drop some of those other dogs off first. Lizzie assured her that she could manage. Okay, try to keep him from barking and jumping up, Mrs. Federico said as she handed Max's leash to Lizzie. Those are two hobbits we are trying to change. Sure, said Lizzie, but Max was like a jumping bean, a noisy jumping bean. His feet barely touched the ground as he boing boinged all over the sidewalk, barking nonstop and jumping up on Lizzie and the other dogs. Lizzie walked back toward sunset as quickly as she could, stopping every few feet to untangle leashes clean up poop, wipe drool off her pants, or let a dog sniff her pee. It was a relief to drop off Atlas, then Scruffy. Tank and Max barked at each other for three straight blocks after that, but Dottie, being deaf, didn't seem bothered. By the time Lizzie made it back to Max's house, she was exhausted. As she walked up the steps to her own house after dropping him off, she shook her head. Tomorrow, she would have to do things differently. Walking five dogs at once was much harder than she had expected. Lizzie stopped on the top step. Five dogs. She had six clients. She smacked her forehead. Ginger! She still had one more dog to walk. Is she gonna make it? We will find out in chapter eight tomorrow. We know that Lizzie has a lot of people that she can count on, family members, her best friend Maria, possibly Maria's family, that she could reach out to for help if she's feeling overwhelmed. I do hope that's a choice she makes. 
we'll see. Until next time, readers. <laughs>